Well, hi, and welcome to my shop. And thanks so much for coming and joining me while I start work on this transistor radio. A Sony radio, an early, an early Sony transistor radio here. Uh, this guy's called the Handy Personal Radio, I guess because it has a handle. It's handy. All transistor. Here's the schematic for it. <coughs> it's a Sony, <coughs> excuse me. Sony TR712. Great. Schematic and all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven transistors. Great. So I've already had a chance to do a touch of work on this. <coughs> Radio, excuse me. And all I've done is I cleaned the uh, volume control, which was very dirty and was actually interfering with the operation of the radio. So, otherwise, it's exactly the way it was presented to me. Now, what's special about this radio is a, it's a family heirloom, so to speak, for someone. So that's why uh, they would like to have it working once again. And uh, it, it does partially work, as you'll see in a few minutes. And my goal will be to make it work better uh, without doing any damage to it. bracket here. It looks like it's rotated out of place here. This bracket. Um, as an external antenna wire, how do I know? It says antenna on it. This, this wire, when I received the uh, set, this wire was twisted onto this earphone output, output here. And, and why exactly there's two here, I'm not sure. This was twisted onto it uh doesn't seem to help or hurt or anything so it's out now the way i think it should be just out like this of course the radio has its own uh, antenna up here doesn't look like anything seriously bad has happened at all to it and there's no reason to think anything bad has happened to it it's probably been stored uh, inside of a house all this time uh, so it's never seen the garage, the attic, the corner of the basement. I don't think it's been in places like that. Now, it comes with a battery tube. Three D cells. And I happen to have three good D cells. Well, they were good. Unfortunately, when the uh, woman who dropped this off dropped it off I popped these batteries into it and turned it on and then proceeded to leave it on for three days straight <laughs> and killed my batteries here but that's okay I have a power supply we can operate it from a power supply easy enough which is what we're gonna do right now okay so gotta be negative where the spring is positive where there's no spring It'll be like that Three batteries equals four and a half volts. That's what we will apply. Okay, so power supply is up here. I'll set this to four volts. And make sure the radio's off. It's off. Oh, oh my gosh, my phone is in my pocket. Shameful thing. I apologize now, but my phone in my pocket, it uh, electromagnetically interferes with uh, microphones or whatever. And you've been hearing some data exchange interference, perhaps. Okay, so I apologize for that. Now, we've got four and a half volts on that meter between four and five volts, I would think. Okay, radio, and what are you gonna do? Now, the shop here is like the worst place in the world to play an AM radio, but that's what we're gonna do. Here we go.
Okay, let's do a little comparison here with a, uh, I don't know if I can really call this a similar radio, but another radio. Anyway, this guy, my Mitsubishi. Let's be tuned to the same station. A dead spot right here <laughs> on my bench. Okay, so that's an idea of what's there at 590. 5, 590 is a sports channel out of Toronto. Toronto is about ooh, know, 100 miles from here. A little over an hour of drive. So this is now tuned to 590. Antenna booster didn't boost that much, but I think we got a clear enough sound there that we can hear what the radio itself sounds like. And based on listening to it here just now and listening to it earlier in my garage, um, it, uh, it's consistent and it sounds terribly distorted. Kind of sounds like something's in cutoff. Um, So, uh, let's look in the back of the radio now and talk about what could be the cause of it. Just about everything and anything. So what do we got here? So I can see a metal plate here. That guy's on the metal plate. He's on the metal plate. This is screwed probably to the metal plate. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I had noticed earlier this this, this has come loose here, or I don't know what it is exactly. There's another one up here. Sure looks like a support for the board. See the antennas on supports that are screwed in with similar screws to these, except I'm going to get a screwdriver in there. The antenna is in the way. It's a large antenna. It has a large antenna. Um, quite a few very small capacitors in here. They all look of the reliable sort. Doesn't necessarily mean they're good, but that means there's a good chance they're good. The other item that's likely to cause distortion is a failed failed uh, transistor or a resistor that's gone out far enough to throw the operating conditions for one of the transistors out so it, uh, it doesn't work quite right. Um, 
probably go some distance. Well, I'm going to probably feed into this guy. Let's see. I can feed into it my own shop signals. That hearing the distortion is difficult when you're listening to a pure sine wave. Uh, just a little difficult. Better to listen to actual voices or something like that to really hear what something's going to sound like. But I could put that signal into it and we could trace the signal through the circuit. And looking at it to see if it's a nice sine wave or if it's turned into something else that might help localize a problem. I'm spending a fair bit of time looking at this because uh, because it pays off. It certainly does pay off to look at things very carefully. So in terms of getting this board out, getting basically the entire radio out of the cabinet and on here. It's all one piece. Let's look at what's going on with the knobs here. Pull this one off. dirty in there that's for sure pretty sure the numbers are on the back this appears to be on the back also I can feel these letters so this where it says uh, all transistor that's another way of saying no tubes in here um, There it is, there it is, seven transistor. They weren't really proud or they would have made this a lot bigger, like seven transistors. I think seven wasn't much of a claim. Um, so I see something here appears to be broken. So there's a, uh, a tab here it's to catch the back. See it's distorted here, it's a little bit distorted here. So it could be somebody didn't realize how to get this out. Right, you just you bend the top up a little bit. Get it out. And they broke this in the process of finding out how to get it out. Whoops. Um, so knob off. Uh, what about this control here? So this has a long knob reaching in. That comes off easy. So once that's off, there's no, there's no interference. Now we're down to screws. So I can see a screw here, screw there. I'm guessing this one up here, maybe off, maybe off the speaker bracket, and the thing's going to come out. And this one, who knows what they were trying to do there. I think that'll bring the whole radio out. this rubbery thing would go stiff and it probably has gone stiff or stiffer than it was originally still has a potential to break it um, so this looks like it was hand soldered doesn't look like it went through a bath it's possible there's a bad solder point in here it's quite possible we never spot it Let's look over it with the uh, close-up camera here, and we'll see what we can see what we can find. Well, uh, you know, like like this one right here looks. You can see the wire popping up through a. Uh, I guess I could call it a meniscus-shaped thing. That that could be cold. See, right in here, that doesn't look great either. Uh, may not be important, but... Uh, what I 
I've done in the past is they just resolder every one of these. Uh, the problem with that is you're just about as likely to make a problem as you are to fix a problem. Very good, actually. Now, the volume control is way over here, under here. Uh, it comes with wires, so so it's it's so the thing is when when you're turning the volume control, uh, this one this one's pretty rigid. It's in metal here, but a lot of these are just mounted right onto the uh, circuit board. So every time you work the volume control, you're flexing the circuit board flexing the uh, connections and a chance of a cold solder joint or a solder joint breaking down I mean was a better way of putting it is very high at the volume control but this one is on a metal plate and then it's isolated with lead wires there's little chance of the volume control causing a problem well wouldn't rush in and resolder all these. Look at that one. Which one? The one that's dead center of the screen there. Uh, see the three of them that are side by side, one in the middle. You can see the wire coming up through the hole. Now it looks plenty soldered. Or does it? Doesn't look great, does it? Okay, but nothing dramatic here. Nothing jumping out. Nothing, uh... Nothing that says, aha. And let's just put our eye on the traces themselves. The copper traces that run in between. Looking for any that are lifted or broken. How could they break? They can crack. That's what they can do. actually look pretty heavy and they're quite spaced out so you know early circuit boards yeah, things aren't crammed together quite as much hey there's a hole there with nothing in it but that's the magic component yeah nothing much to see there now we're going to take a close look at the uh, top side of this Hundred microfarad, eight volts, six volts, whatever it is. This is an electrolytic capacitor. This one right here again. Pretty sure. So electrolytic capacitors have a bit of a life. They don't last forever. These guys could be the cause of the problem, the distortion. Like almost everything could be the cause of distortion. What's going on with that resistor? Right now? It's just a brown band. I thought it was a brown burn mark. Small capacitors down there. These all look great. There's a couple transistors sitting there. They look like friends, don't they? I mean, they are friendly, friendly transistors. Another one here. It says Sony right on the transistor. Okay. We look down into these uh, coils and we see they've waxed them. They've put poured wax in the top. That's not inviting me to get in there and do anything to them. There's another one. There's a nice coil. Got a slug in it. Hey, it didn't wax this one. There's a weird green looking, mm, what must be a capacitor there. That's pretty weird looking. There's another one over here. Never, never seen capacitors look quite like that. One here. Green guy. And, uh, what is this white thing here? 
capacitor, electrolytic capacitor. Another one over there. Quite a few capacitors. But nothing leaping out at me here. Nothing is nothing is saying I gotta go. What's this? MPR. What are those? Hmm, what is that thing? MPR. Don't know what they are offhand. Some kind of capacitor, maybe. Not sure. A bit of an integrated. How many leads are on that? That guy. We can't really see, can we? Well, maybe. Just one on the outsides, outside corners. Probably a capacitor. And what's going on with the wire there? That's turned white. Probably some kind of a uh, attack life on earth trying to establish itself inside here that's a little bit of rust is that rust on there rust well could be okay uh we look at the big capacitor for a moment nothing funny going on there Looking at the outside plates. Got the camera on a funny angle here. I don't know what I'm doing with it there. That's better. Looks fine. Uh, looks like a little bit of oiling could be done in there. Ball bearing. It looks like the oil kind of globbing up around them. what I think is a ball bearing there. I'm not sure what that is. And we look at the antenna. The antenna's got some writing on it here. Don't know what it is. We got a coil here with four wires. And way down here is another coil. Special uh, winding uh, technique being used there. Trying to reduce the amount of time wires are parallel to each other. Um, I'm not sure what that coil is out there because this guy's got a bunch of wires. He's got four wires. This coil is analogous to that uh, crazy thing I had up on my bench earlier uh, that I was tuning. It's just this one's done with a, a ferrite rod. Some kind of rod. Okay, we didn't find anything there that's going to solve the problem in itself. Next step, I think, is to feed a uh, signal generator signal into it and uh, start tracing the signal along and try to spot where the signal goes from being a nice sine wave to something less so. Maybe we can kind of isolate uh, where there might be trouble in here. Okay, ready for the next attempt. Now, the uh, distorted sound we were hearing from this radio, it's possible it's the speaker itself. It's not very likely, but it's possible. Hopefully we can sort that out too uh, while we're doing this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this radio and tune it up, up around a million here. Okay, let's set it here. Set my signal generator is already at a million. Okay, strength is up. There. Hmm. Not a very good volume control on that radio. So. The output of this guy is being fed to this coil here again. I'm going to tune that coil here. Now, this is fed on the single the single loop here. The multi-loop is just hooked up to the capacitor, nothing more. Now, we need to tune 
tune this radio to the one million spot and uh, where would that be? So it's in like that. The one million is uh, just past just past straight up. like this. I can see the pointer here. Right in this area here. And you know, a good reason for not hearing anything is there's no power being supplied to the radio. <laughs> I'm not going to get very far like this. Here's the power over here. Yeah, that was kind of a silly exercise there. So we want to put the ground here. Clip the power onto this wire. Okay, radio off. On. Okay, so we already hear the tone coming out of there. It should sound like a beautiful tone. It doesn't. Let me tune the radio here. Ooh. Funny business. It's a pretty funny sound. That's a supposed to be a 400 hertz tone. This is what a thousand hertz would sound like. Clearly, in my ears, that's a uh, clipped signal. That's what that sounds like to me. So instead of being a nice smooth sine wave, the top or the bottom is chopped off. And when you get a sharp corner in a wave shape, you're getting lots of harmonics to generate that sharp corner so to speak it's not quite true but that's good enough now why why is it like that why is it like that let me just tip this coil over here a bit yeah good so just to be clear the signal generator is not directly connected to the radio the radio is picking up the signal generator from this coil here to this antenna here So what we can try doing is listening to the signal as it progresses through the radio, step, step by step, and hear what it sounds like. And at this point we need to understand the circuit a little bit better. So I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to run through the schematic here. You know, I'm usually doing this with tube radio equipment, but uh, we're going to do it with uh, yeah, volume. Do it with this. So let me get that. You know what? This might be better to do right here, just like this. If I just put it like this. And away we go. Okay, so speaker over here, antenna over there, radio in between. Let's start over here at the antenna. So here we see the loop stick. And we see a tuned system here. You see this dotted line over to here? That means when you tune the tuning dial on the front of the radio, you're moving the value, changing the value of these two capacitors here. Uh, almost certainly this one is involved with the oscillator. This one's just involved with the antenna. What is this doing out here? This is that other coil I noticed. It's connected right there. Well, I'm going to guess that what's 
going on here is you hook up your long wire antenna here, that wire on the back of the radio, you hook up your nice long outdoor antenna. That generates a signal in through this coil. And then the signal is transformed because there's a core here, right, this, this, this bar here, transformed down into this coil. This coil is tuned so it resonates at the frequency you're interested in. And then this thing really builds up a lot of energy basically uh, in here. That's transferred to this side of the transformer and where it's fed right into the base. You know, step down transformer or trying to generate current into this base of the tran transistor. Hey, there's a wire missing right here on the diagram. It's an open circuit. Well, that's why it's not working. They forgot to connect the wire here. So we see the output here. It says, it says oscillator right here. Oscillator. So maybe maybe that's what's going on here. So how's the signal getting on over to here? It's got to get to here. Looks like it's passing through this transformer. You see the dotted line indicates there's a continuous, there's a core, a shared core here. So how's the signal get into there? It's got to be coming out of here. So you got the antenna, you got the oscillator together heading for this this uh, this uh, transistor. Um, well, that's what's going on. Anyway, we sh so we should be able to pick up you know, a radio signal here at the broadcast frequency. Should be able to pick up the uh, local oscillator frequency in here. But if you fool with any of this, like if I stick an instrument on any of this, it'll probably throw it way off. It'll just unbalance everything. When we get out here, though, it's a little different. Um, so this this would be one of the IF transformers. Oh, it says right there IFT2, IFT1, IFT1 here. One, two, three. Is that right? One, two, three. Look at the radio here. Looks like one, two, three, but could be could be one, two, three. Okay. Three cans. Three three tuned tuned cans tuned to the IF frequency. So 455, getting to the base here, uh, boosting, base here, transformed. So this is the output of the radio right here, and this is the tricky device that turns the radio signal into a speaker signal you can hear. Uh, it's really quite simple. And um, from here we develop some DC here across this capacitor and it's fed back on this wire. So one of the things I'm not familiar with in uh, transistor uh, radios is how the automatic volume control is handled. So it, it may it may be something similar to what goes on with tubes. And you can vary the bias on the base here. Maybe it changes the gain through there. I, I can't I can't remember now. <laughs> And that might be a factor that's uh, particular to certain transistors, that uh, the base voltage varies the gain. I'm not sure. I don't know. But that certainly looks like an AVC going back. AVC is designed to uh, reduce the sensitivity of the radio when a loud signal appears. Otherwise, you'd have a loud sound coming out of the speaker. And as you tuned across looking for stations, you'd have quiet ones. You could hardly hear and loud ones blowing your ears off. So you'd have to have your hand on the volume control. That's a hassle. So all that's been corrected with a little bit of feed, feedback. I shouldn't use the word feedback. A uh, signal. I shouldn't use the word signal. A voltage. Yes, a voltage that gets applied back in the radio here to to calm it down. Which is why when you tune between stations with an AM radio like this, you hear lots of noise and hash and crashing. And when you get to the actual station all that noise seems to go go down and disappear as if the station is pushing it out but what's really happening is the station signal is developing this automatic volume control voltage here and that voltage is being used to turn down the volume of the radio automatically AVC automatic volume control that's what's happening there so now the there's there, there's RF here 455 kilohertz of RF some of that's still over here and they want to get rid of it. So 
probably drain it out with this capacitor here. Now what are you left with? You're left essentially with the audio signal. The volume control here, so you can pick off how much you want before you send it to the base. Now look at these capacitors. Look at this one. This one. And this one. And all these. They are drawn. They look like elect look to me like they're probably electrolytic. Let's check one here. This is C17, is it? And we look for C17 down here. Ten uh, microfarads, three volts. It, it doesn't say, but it's almost certainly electrolytic. <laughs> Those are probably good choices to change out in this radio. Uh, any one of these could cause the kind of uh, distortion that we're hearing. If if the problem is over here, but we can listen to the signal at this point, we might find out it's clear coming out of the radio and then distort it through the amplifier. So this is all audio here. This is all radio over here. So uh, in a transistor radio, you're trying to build up current uh, to uh, pump into the base of the output transistors here. So that's what's going on here. You're just building the signal up, trying to get more and more current to go through this. This transformer, it gets transformed over here into a push-pull arrangement on these two transistors. There could be problems here in this circuit that would cause the kind of sound we're hearing. These resistors might not be right. I mean, various things could happen here. What is that diode? So that diode looks like it's a biasing diode here, uh, creating a bias. So here you have the, uh, I was going to say B+, plus, but we better say VCC. I think it's the right thing to say here. And you're just, where to go? You're just dropping some here, and then you're feeding it here. Yeah, so the difference here between a vacuum tube and a transistor is that there is a base current. You have to you have to feed a current to make uh, transistors work. So, well, not all transistors, but these ones are current devices. So then we got here's the story on these two jacks. Why are the two jacks? Why would they put two jacks on here? So. This is the signal, one jack, the other jack. And you know what it is? It looks like one will interrupt the speaker and the other one won't. That's what they've done here. So if you plug into jack one, the speaker will shut off. But if you plug into jack two, the, the speaker will stay. That's what they've done here. They didn't mark it on the cabinet at all. Here's the battery and the power supply over here. That's the radio. So what we need to do, we need to find this guy right here. Find this guy or the volume control. Actually, the easiest thing. Find the volume control, you find everything. Volume control right in the split between radio and audio. We can, we can listen right here to what is here and see if it's distorted. That's a good idea. That's easy to find in the radio. Why is it so easy to find? Because it's jumping right out of this radio, jumping right out at me. It's one of these guys. One of those guys. So they don't they don't show you the uh, color here of the wire, but one goes one goes to the ground, the center one. We're really after the center one. So these things are structurally the same way. The center one here is hooked up to the uh, slider. So when I'm turning this, I'm moving a little slider inside here that's hooked up to here. And I'm moving the slider closer to this one or closer to that one. That's the volume control. If I go on here, well, we can listen to what's coming out of the volume control here. And one of these two, we can listen to what's going in on the volume control. OK, so I'm going to set up a little more equipment here so we can do this and uh, find out what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to try this with a uh, audio signal tracer I haven't actually used <laughs> yet till now. This, this guy up here. Okay, I'm going to ground this. I guess we're grounded to the battery ground. Okay. I'm going to touch the volume control leads. 
and we're gonna start with the center one. Now the difficulty here is to cut that speaker going. So I'm gonna turn this one way up. Ooh, that might be awfully loud. I'm turn this down. So I can hear it coming out of that speaker over yonder. It sounds exactly the same. Okay, now we're going to go on the input side to the volume control. Let me turn this down a bit. I'm going to guess it's the white wire. There it is. Okay, you can hear it quite clearly. Oh, what happened there? So that's the sound coming out of the radio after going through the detector. Now we want to try to back up further and listen to the sound coming out of the radio. Now I don't think I can do it with this signal tracer. I think this is audio only and we've already discovered that. So, so what, we, what we did was we're on, we're on the far side of the diode, the detector, and we're listening to the audio and it's distorted. So now we want to go on the radio side of the detector listen to the signal uh, with a radio, not, not, not audio, but to listen with a radio tuned to 455 kilohertz. We should pick the signal up in here. And the tricky business is doing this without hooking up equipment. I can probably hook up equipment here, no problem. It's all pretty low impedance, as I understand it, as compared to vacuum tube circuits that are, a lot of them are high impedance and you, they're affected so easily by test equipment on that. Again, my familiarity with working on transistor radio is very low. Very low. So one way to pick this signal up is to put a coil near it and try to pick it up that way. But I think I'm going to go direct. Maybe we can spot exactly where this diode is. The diode might stand out on the circuit here. Let me switch switch cameras. It'll be a little easier. Let's go. Whoops. Oops, let's go diode hunting. Diode hunting. If I were a diode, where would I be? Well, so somewhat in relation to these three cans here. Oh, way out of focus. Yeah, hold on. This is on set for close up. Give me a second here. Let me just reset the focus on the camera. So, what, what I find is I can't use the autofocus uh, for doing this kind of stuff because it's forever trying to focus on the wrong thing or it starts refocusing or whatever it might be there that should be okay like that so I so I use a manual focus on this camera all the time pretty well all the time uh, what are we looking at we still got to get up pretty close so these three cans here one two three at one end or the other there's probably a diode sitting where it can be easily seen. And it's going on the other end here, down at this end. Is that the diode right there, that black thing? Hmm. Could be, could be, could be, could be. Looking everywhere now for a diode since I didn't find it really clearly. A diode looking diode would be what I'm after. I don't I don't see one anywhere. So the guess would be where'd he go? Where'd he go? That is the diode right there. Ha! Ah, the light just came on. Yeah. Um how can we how can we prove this is a diode? Get get a better look at it. Better look at it. It definitely has the diode look. Okay, well, let's listen to it and see what we can hear. If we can hear anything coming out of it. So I think uh, we should easily hear audio on it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sniff with the audio guy first. Let's turn it down a little bit. Is it still going? Still going. Okay. That's really inconvenient. Nothing like using older test equipment. Now, is 
that sound is bad. Let's turn it down. So we're just we're just hearing out of the uh, speaker over here. This will be a little louder now. Doesn't sound very good to me. Okay, um, I think we can, uh, I think it's a pretty good bet, that's the diode, there, that puts us right here, and we should be able to get uh, RF on it also, but I, I don't think I can do it with this signal tracer, we're going to switch to a different signal tracer, and that one over here, at least I know now my other tracer works. I'm turn this guy on. He has a bit of a hum, which I think you can probably hear. So this does the same thing as the other one, the other uh, tracer. It'll trace audio. We've got some complicated volume controls here and stuff. But this is also a radio receiver. But it is not a radio receiver of the sort we normally listen to. It's not a super heterodyne receiver. It's a tuned radio frequency receiver. So this has no intermediate frequency, no stages of that sort. And that makes it a useful instrument. Now we want to try to listen at 455 kilohertz. 455 is on band A. Band A. Put something there right now. Band A. And we want to be at 455. 455. Now what exactly that noise is that we're hearing? So this is something I hear kind of regularly in my shop. In various scenarios, it comes out of radios, it's coming out of my tracer right now. That ticking uh, sound will vary in, in speed, and sometimes it'll just slow right down and stop. Kind of, kind of makes you think it's a motor? I don't think so. Though. I have no idea what it is. I've been listening to it for years now. still don't know what it is. These are the two uh, inputs here. We're going to turn the volume down. Now, these are short short leads here. They're not very long. So we don't really need to look at that device because we're going to hear it working. So I'm going to pull the whole deal over here. Okay. Now, we're going to clip on again ground here. So we want to try right on that diode again, and uh, yeah, it's time you can keep an eye because I'm going to be doing a little tuning stuff over here. And hand on the volume control. There we go. Okay. Well, what do you think of that? Now that to me sounds much cleaner, doesn't it? Let's tune a little bit. Funny going on with this radio here. So we should only be able to hear it just right in this area, and we shouldn't really hear it down here, but I'm not going to worry about that. It sounds like it's uh, not actually 455. So, um, so we have a nice signal here. Sure sounds like a nice signal on RF, but the audio version of this, which I can get on here pretty easy, like this, like this, oh boy, okay, not much audio here, that's coming out of that speaker, come on, I could hear this on the other tracer, Well, I don't know. It's maybe this is causing some kind of load effect. Uh, it shouldn't. This goes straight into a vacuum tube. That's why this is so large. There's a vacuum tube in here, and this goes straight to the grid. It's just right on the grid, so you can't get any higher impedance than this. I don't know how you could, really. Well, you could, but 
because the tube has a certain amount of Okay, so, so the hum is to be ignored. That's probably coming from the device here itself. Got the attenuator on here. Let me just... That's better. Well, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I thought that sounded bad on the other tracer. That, that sounds like a nice tone. Okay, again, that's audio on what I believe is the uh, detector diode. Tune the radio a little bit here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, down here. Ooh, some weird stuff there. I'm going to change the frequency we're listening to to a thousand hertz here. Okay, let's try this one. That didn't sound so good. Hmm. So this maxes out at 450. And this is quite accurate. This dial is quite accurate. Four, 455 just up here a little bit. It's not terrible. So that sounds good. It doesn't sound so good. Okay, I think we need to look at the signal here and see what it looks like. So I'm going to set up a little more equipment to, to enable that. Okay, now what I've got hooked up here, I've got my scope, my scope running there, the scope lead is right here, and we're going to attack. Yes, what is it? Okay, so that's her indication she wants to go out, and that was it. Right there, that, that look. Hey, Shadow. Yeah, what do you want to do? Go outside? It's raining out there. Do you see we have two bells? Can you see that? Two bells hanging from our collar? Because uh, unfortunately, Shadow is a hunter. And uh, we have those bells hanging there to warn her prey that she's a coming. Right? Yeah. Well, she's going to meow at me until I deal with her so i'm going to do that and then we will be back and continue with this deal here uh, so easy to trick a cat she's in the garage now which is not a punishing place to be for a cat it's kind of another not an, another world of excitement for her okay so now we're gonna carry on here uh, let's just take a closer look at the oscilloscope so um We've got this set to uh, volt per division. That's make it a little more sensitive. 0.2 volts per division, and the, the scan rate is whatever it is. Okay, now so I'm gonna hook this up right to here. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna change my camera arrangement just a wee bit. Okay, now we can see two things at once. So. We're going to hook up, see what we get. First of all, is it affecting the radio? No effect on the radio at all. There's what we got. Be a little tricky to make this good for your eyes and good for mine at the same time. Let's speed it up. Now, I want to get a nice look at the uh, signal here, and uh, I have to get my scope to trigger, which is a problem with the scope. Let's try this. We need, we need 
a lot stronger signal size. Sorry about the hand. Faster yet. Come on now, freeze up. filters here. Reject below. That helped. There we are. Come on, you can do it. Dingo! There it is. And what do we see? We see a perfect looking sine wave. Let me get it a little bigger here. I mean, that just looks perfect. So that's at the diode. That's audio. Is that audio? Is that audio? <laughs> Hopefully I haven't spread out the RF signal. Let me just switch the tone here. Oh, I've, you know what I've done? I've, that's the RF signal. That's the RF signal. Where's the audio? I'm getting no sign of any audio there. Uh, so yeah, I've got this, this speed turned way up on the... There's the audio now. That little bit at the top there. Uh, volume should make no difference, except what we hear. What am I hearing that sounds so nice in here? Um, so when I turn the volume up, well, when the volume's turned down, I don't know if you can hear it. Did I leave this other radio on all this time? <laughs> okay, let's get that out. That's why it sounded so nice. Yeah, now we're back to this. Um, so, uh, a little bit tricky. Let's see if I can expand this. I don't think I can get it much better than it was. And what we're trying to see is, is this, is this a distorted looking thing? Let's try freezing it here. That's uh, that's better. It looks fine. It, you know, as much as I can see, it looks like a pretty ordinary sine wave. Don't see any flat tops, cutoffs, or anything like that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll listen to it um, right at the uh, volume control. We'll see the difference now. Okay, I'll take that off. Put this back like this. We gotta move it back up on the screen. There you are. Okay, we're gonna go audio input side of the volume control. Oh, we gotta listen to it first. Okay, it makes no difference. To the uh, operation. Hey, where the? Uh, where'd it go? Oh, well, that's not going to work. Is it, is it the black wire? Well, it's happening. How come I'm not showing on the scope? Well, hey, 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 what's happened to the scope here? So there's a switch here, it's on times 10. But what happened to your scope? Just want to hook it up to anything that'll have a signal on it. What happened? Where'd you go? It's showing up very tiny here. Uh, a mystery has developed. I mean, I'm kind of have this hooked up to a dumb spot. Let's go back on the uh, diode. Okay, that's that's what we were seeing before. Very, very, very low levels. In fact, I could put this to uh, one here. That'll times ten it. <laughs> now let's check and see if this is affecting the radio at all. Not really. I'll go 
back up here. Input of the volume control. There it is. You need a little signal there. Now, wait a minute. Now, is that audio? Okay, so I'm going to change the audio frequency here. There. You can hear it. Oh, yeah. That's definitely, yeah. Uh, so that is the audio signal now. That's at 400 hertz. Getting tough for the speaker to reproduce it already. So now, does this? I know it's all. Uh, come on, can you please just stop for a minute? Please do me a favor. It will not. Well, I'm not going to play around here. I can't get it to uh, trigger, but in any case, you can see it. I think it looks pretty good, although it looks like it's full of noise. Now, that doesn't sound right. So now we've looked at, at the diode, we've looked at the volume control, we're getting the impression the audio is okay to that point. So we want to go a little further into the audio side of things. We should jump right to the speaker and start working back this way, I think. So we'll look and see what the sound we're hearing looks like. How are you going to do that? Uh, I'm going to clip this somewhat randomly onto the wires on the earphone here. Randomly? What was that? What was that? It just suddenly went louder. I don't know. Okay. So what you see is what we're hearing. Oh boy, is that messed up. Now I could probably get that to trigger. Come on. You can do it. Yes. Channel two, just on channel two. It just will not trigger. Well, that's really bad. I thought it would trigger on such a weird looking signal. So we just have to look at it marching across the screen there. Um, it is really bad. That is a really weird looking thing there. That usually means a disastrous situation for one of the amplifying elements like one of the transistors. So a transistor shot, components around the transistor shot, uh, those capacitors I pointed out could be the cause of all this. Um, so what are we going to do here? Uh, we, well, we're looking at the speaker right now. We, we can move forward. We should we should really try to hear the output of this, which is really the input to these. We go on this side of, of the transformer here. We could pick up the input here. Better to pick it up over here though, because here it's, they've already done some funny stuff with it to prepare it for the uh, push pull. So we go here. We got the signal on the primary side of this transformer. Where's that? So we look in here and we see a couple transformers right away. Hmm, we see two transistors right tight together here. Probably these are the output transistors. They're also big guys. They're they're big ones. Physically large transistors close together. These are no doubt radio uh, because they're involved with these here. This is part of the radio side of things. Audio. So one of these is going to be driving the speaker and one of these is going to be driving the uh, output transistors. So just using stupid analytical techniques, these wires from the speaker go over here. Probably related to this. So probably the signal path is uh, these are probably the two transistors just just one transistor one of these two <laughs> transistors is probably kind of the one we're after this is probably the transformer it has three wires on the output side and on the input side 
it has only two wires. Okay, two wires and three wires. That that matches the uh, schematic here. See, two wires and three wires. So I think I found I think I found the primary side of this. Uh, what would we call this? This would be the uh, driver transformer for the push-pull transistors. So we get on one of those two wires down there, and we should be seeing what is being fed to the uh, to the output. Ho hopefully, I kept the camera on target there. Don't really <laughs> don't know. Don't know. Okay, so we're going to come off here. Now we're going to try to get on there. We don't know which one's which. One one is. Uh, Ooh, it's capacitorized down to the uh, return bus, if you like. They capacitorized it. So how do I know which, which one of these I'm getting on to? Uh, well, one of them's going to have signal, and the other, one, the other one would have a DC voltage on it. Both going to have the, the same DC voltage on it pretty well. Okay, here we go. So, scope is set to AC. Let's move it over to DC. Just to make things more complicated and make it less sensitive. So we're at something, we're at say one volt per division and I think, what happened there? How did it get down there? Did I bump this? I must have bumped this. Or is there a DC there already? No, I haven't got hooked up to anything. Okay, here we go. We're going up here, we're going, we're going to go with the easy wire first, the one that's easy to access. There it is. So DC voltage went up, but I don't see any signal there. Um, let's flip back to AC. I'll put this in the middle again and we'll make it more sensitive. There is something there when you get it really up, turned up. Let's go on the other, the other wire, back to DC. Is take it off. We'll go on the other wire. Okay, other other lead. Okay, there we are. Oh, that's interesting. So again, DC threw it up. So we'll, we'll get rid of that by, by changing the AC only. Hello. Oh, wrong one. AC only down here. Okay, and make it more sensitive, and we can look at that. Oh. So scope is affecting the uh, radio a little bit. Let's leave it there. There you have it. Now I'm going to change the frequency of the transmitter here. And uh, just doesn't sound terrible. And when you look at the signal uh, pattern, it's not terrible, but it certainly isn't a, a nice sine wave. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible, actually. We'll go. Yeah, I'm affecting it here. So I, I can do, I can do, I, I can make this uh, from a, to a times 10 and go up. Well, that's really interesting. It's just, that's kind of weird. No, I'm weird. I'm weird. I don't know why it comes back on it. I don't know. Strange thing there. Back to back to uh, times one. Like that. Like that. Like that right there. What about that? What about that? Now let's tune the radio a little bit. Make sure we're tuned in, because tuning can do weird things. So that's an oscillation. The radio is breaking into an oscillation. You can see it. Zero triggering here. Hmm. Turn this down a little bit. Hmm. So again, what are we looking at? We're looking at 
I just bump the tuning a little bit here. stuff just tuning through it okay when I look at that signal there the noise signal I know it's hard to see on the camera but the top of it here is, is flattened it's cut the bottom is not but the top is Got me why it slowed down just now, but <laughs> it did, so we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. You can get a good look at it now. My gosh. Okay, I think, I think that's enough. I think, um, I think, I think, I think, I think the problems are all in the audio stages. Uh, there are a number of unreliable capacitors in here, I believe. Uh, the, all these electrolytic ones. Could go in and change all these electrolytic ones. What is there? One, two, three, four, five of them. And see if that doesn't just clear the whole radio up. Here's another one way over here. Uh, there's one over here. Okay, so I'm going to stop and think about this a little bit uh, before I start. There's probably a better way to do it and a worse way to do it. I'd like to be somewhere in the middle of <laughs> that uh, before I get the soldering iron going on it.